Hello and welcome to this civil service behaviour series video. In this series we break down all nine of the core behaviours that can be tested within your civil service application. On today's agenda is the behaviour communicating and influencing and more specifically that dreaded interview stage. We're going to be looking at what communicating and influencing actually means. Well, what your interviewer thinks it means anyway. Then we're going to deep dive into the questions you can be asked in your interview. There's five questions we'll look at and we'll go over how best to answer each one of them. Then finally, I'm going to share with you the questions that you should be wary of as they try to get you to drop your guard and may cause you to lose precious grading points. First things first, we can't show off our abilities we don't understand what it is we are being assessed on. The civil service defines communicating and influencing as being able to communicate purpose and direction with clarity, integrity and enthusiasm, respecting the needs, responses and opinions of others. Fundamentally, communicating and influencing is looking at how well you come across when delivering information to other people and how likely those people are to take what you say to heart. How well do you convey information? Are you concise and easy to understand? Or do you tend to ramble on and detract from the original point? Are you able to tailor your message to your audience and have them accept what you are telling them? And are you able to demonstrate all of that with examples from your experience? If so, let's take a look at some of the questions you can be asked in a communicating and influencing interview. First question we're going to look at today is tell me about the time you successfully negotiated something. This question is a staple in interviews especially relevant for roles that demand effective communication and persuasion skills. It dives into your ability to engage in negotiations where you must influence others, aiming for a win-win outcome. What interviewers are keen on here is your strategy for preparation, your execution during the negotiation, and how you manage to achieve a favourable result for all parties involved. When you're picking an example, think of a time when your negotiation skills shone. It could be a workplace conflict, a project resource allocation, or even a salary negotiation. Highlight how you prepared, the tactics you used, and the positive impact of the negotiation. Before we discuss the next question, let's drill deeper into how to answer civil service behaviour questions. These questions you're going to be asked are called competency-based questions and are designed for you to share an example from your experience with the interviewer. The answer you give should be full and detailed yet it should also be concise and to the point. It's a paradox, I know. Basically, you should stay on point and refrain from any non-relevant and non-important matters. Simply stick to the important points in a well-structured manner. And the best way to do this is by using the B-star method. Using B-star, you will split your answer into five key parts. The first is the B, which stands for belief. You want to begin your response by sharing your thoughts and feelings regarding the subject matter. This helps set the stage for your story and demonstrate your personal connection to the topic. This doesn't make much sense. Check out the show notes for example answers for all the questions in this video. Next up, we have S, the situation. Briefly describe the context of the scenario in which your actions took place. This provides the interviewer with an understanding of the circumstances surrounding your experience. Remember, it's essential to keep this part concise as the primary focus should be on your actions and the results. Look at the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, and incorporate the relevant ones into your story. Following the situation, we have T for task. Explain your specific role and responsibilities in the situation. By doing this, you highlight what you were entrusted with in your previous roles and also let the interviewer understand what expectations were made of you within the situation at hand. Up next, we have the most important section, and that is A for action. Describe the steps you took to achieve the desired outcome and explain the rationale behind your actions. This section and the results section should be the most detailed as it illustrates exactly what you are capable of doing and achieving. And then finally, we have R for the results. Conclude your response with the results of your actions using figures or quantifiable outcomes whenever possible. This will demonstrate to the interviewer the impact of your efforts and your ability to deliver tangible results in your role. This is also where you can share any lessons you learn from the experience, should you wish. Now, keeping that structure in mind, let's take a look at some more questions. Question two is tell me about the time you had to give bad news. 
Communicating bad news is a test of your sensitivity, of your professionalism and of your communication skills. The essence of this question is to uncover your ability to handle difficult conversations with empathy, ensuring the message is delivered clearly and with compassion. Interviewers are looking for your approach to these conversations, how you prepare and how you manage the recipient's response. Choose an instance where you navigated this challenge with care. Detail your preparation and your choice of words and how you supported the individual after delivering the news, which showcases your emotional intelligence and your professionalism. Moving on, we have question three. Just tell me about the time you've had to adapt your communication to different audiences. Adapting your communication to suit different audiences is crucial for effective influencing. This question explores your flexibility and your awareness of your audience's needs. The interviewer wants to see examples of how you've tailored your communication style to ensure your message was received as intended and led to successful outcomes. Select an example where changing your approach made a significant difference. Maybe you simplified technical jargon for a non-technical audience. Or maybe you use visuals to explain complex information. Emphasize the audience, your adaptation, and the positive feedback or results that followed. Next question is question four. Tell me about a time when you communicated effectively in a difficult situation. Effective communication in tough times is key to resolution and maintaining relationships. Here, the focus is on your ability to stay composed and articulate, especially when the stakes are high. Interviewers are interested in how you navigate through these situations using your communication skills to de-escalate conflicts or persuade others. Pick a moment where your communication was critical to overcoming a challenge. Describe the situation, how you handled the communication and the positive outcome that ensued. Finally, we have question five. Just tell me about a time you had to manage a difficult stakeholder. Managing difficult stakeholders is about strategic communication and alignment of interests. This question seeks to understand how you handle complex relationships, ensuring you can navigate through disagreements and align divergent expectations. The goal is to see your stakeholder management strategy, focusing on communication and relationship building. Choose a scenario where you turn a challenging stakeholder relationship around. Talk about how you engage with the stakeholder, how you understood their concerns, and the impact your actions had on the project or on the relationship success. And that is the final question we are looking at. But before we go, there is one type of question that I want to go over, as it is one that you should always be wary of in your civil service application. And that is ungraded questions. You'll know the question is ungraded because the interviewer will tell you. These are usually quite innocuous sounding questions, like what do you like to do at the weekends? Or what hobbies are you passionate about? Those type of questions. You will be told these questions are just icebreakers or that they are just there to make you feel at ease and not to worry because you won't be scored on these questions. Which, in fairness, is all true. But what they're not telling you is that your answers, and more specifically how you answer, is going to be used as a benchmark when assessing and grading your other answers. Remember that when grading your answers, one of the things they're looking at is how enthusiastic you are and how much you seem motivated by what you do. If you are very passionate about your weekend plans, but seemingly unenthused about your actions in previous roles, this will be noted and this will affect your grading. This is just something to keep in mind when answering these so-called ungraded questions. Alright, that's the end of our video today. If you enjoyed our content, please don't forget to subscribe so you can see more of our career guidance videos. If you are still nervous about your upcoming interview, check out the show notes for more resources. And don't hesitate to drop a question in the comments below and we'll help in any way we can. That is it from me. Good luck in your future application with the civil service and take care.